Hello, it's Peter Bradshaw here from The Guardian again with my film review channel, the Cornish Quartz Cheddar of Criticism with the Chutney of Insight in the Pub Plowmans of Discourse. Just last year, Kate Blanchett was introducing us to the tormented fictional conductor Lydia Tarr as she watches old childhood VHS tapes of her mentor, the great conductor and composer Leonard Bernstein, talking about the way music triggers in you emotions you didn't understand and of which you didn't know you were capable. Now Bradley Cooper, in spectacular hair and makeup, has directed and starred in this heartfelt, garrulous and faintly exhausting film, Maestro, conceived with sincerity and taste all about the sexually complex Bernstein and his troubled relationship with his wife, the Costa Rican actress and activist Felicia Montalegre Cohn, played with rather brittle English poise and self-deprecating common sense by Kerry Mulligan. He can be the first great American conductor. <laughs> There's a price for being in my brother's orbit, you know that. This is a compulsively fluent film with Cooper and Mulligan grinning and scatting and chirruping their way through many extended and overlapping dialogue scenes. Cooper has already got into a lot of trouble for Jew face, though not for gay face, in that he is a non-Jewish man playing a Jewish role with a big prosthetic nose. Now, in fact, in the context of the complete movie, that big nose isn't a big deal. I incidentally regard it as karmic filmic justice for Nicole Kidman's far more ridiculous fake nose in The Hours, playing one of the great anti-Semites, Virginia Woolf. In the early part of the film, shot in luminous black and white, young Leonard Bernstein is a bundle of pure creative energy, but no soigné, self-indulgent European. He is solidly American, muscular, frank, direct, almost like an athlete away from the track, with a prodigious work rate that he never agonises about. His voice at this stage is light and rather high, as opposed to the gravelly gravitas of his middle-aged self, and his attraction to men is just one of the things that he's relaxed about. When he meets Felicia at a party in the presence of his sister Shirley, played by Sarah Silverman, who has incidentally discussed her mixed feelings at actual Jewish actors getting to play subservient roles, there is a happy spark straight away. It is at this meeting that the movie goes into its screwball mode, with Lenny and Felicia gabbling away to each other 19 to the dozen, a mode which it never entirely leaves, or only in the final saddest scenes. As the years go by, the crisp monochrome is succeeded by a rich colour which somehow feels seedier and less innocent than the black and white. It is here that you see Bernstein bloated with all the Kool-Aid he's been drinking, charming the pants off everyone, beaming with satisfaction at his own colossal prestige, dallying with beautiful young men and finally lying to his daughter, who's sufficiently grown up to hear the truth about the rumours she's been hearing, smoothly attributing these to jealousy. As for Cooper himself, he's an eerie likeness of the great man, particularly in showing Bernstein's scary and rapacious upper set of teeth, grinningly revealed as Bernstein flings his head ecstatically back at the podium. Perhaps it's inevitable that such an accomplished and studied impersonation should be a little narcissistic, but as ever with Cooper, his pure theatrical technique is very commanding, although there are moments when Lenny is bashing away at the piano keyboard and Cooper looks a little bit like Michael Douglas playing Liberace. In the end, Cooper's maestro succeeds because it is candid about the sacrifices which art demands of its practitioners and the sacrifices these practitioners demand of their families and partners. Bernstein was never going to compromise who he was, no matter how much he loves his wife. There is a sad, wintry acceptance of that. That's it for the time being. Please give this vlog a like and a share. Please excitedly recommend it to your friends and neighbours. Please subscribe to this channel and leave a comment telling me what you're enjoying in the cinema right now. Please check out my author page at The Guardian and please, oh please, buy my book, The Films That Made Me, an edited selection of my essays and reviews from The Guardian. See you next time.